Hi, this is Dr. Proactive Randy Gilbert, producer of InsideSuccessRadio.com, and I invite you to take a moment and listen to this powerful interview segment so you can be more proactive and successful. Let's return to the path to triumph with the Inside Success Show. And welcome back to the Inside Success Show. This is Randy Gilbert, and I'm back with Harrison Monarch and Lorena Case, authors of The Confidence Speaker. And Lorena, I'd like to start with you this time, if I could. Sure. But what are some of the common myths and misconceptions about public speaking anxiety? I'm so glad you asked that question because this is one of the things that really maintains public speaking anxiety. There's so many myths out there, Mm -hmm. and we cover a lot of them in The Confident Speaker. I'll I'll give you a couple now. One is that if you are anxious, you will not perform well. In reality, we actually need anxiety to perform well. We just need the right level of anxiety. What happens is people start getting a little bit nervous. They feel their heart beating quickly, and they think, oh, no, I'm anxious. I'm not going to do a good job when we found in research that, in fact, when people are a bit anxious, they do a fine job. In fact, they do a great job. They come across as motivated and energetic, and audiences consistently rate speakers better than the speakers rate themselves. And this happens because when a speaker is nervous, they feel that anxiety, and they make that assumption that that means they're not coming across well. And we know that that's simply not true. The audience thinks that they're coming across just fine. Now, the exception, of course, is if you have an overwhelming level of anxiety because that might make you avoid the speaking engagement altogether or stand there frozen in fear and not do anything. So that's why we do need to bring it down to an optimal level of anxiety. But the myth is that you you won't perform well if you are anxious. It's almost like uh, if you're you're hot or you're cold, you're you're going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't be lukewarm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly the analogy. Very good. Yeah. Well, Harrison, uh, what do you think uh, really does make people nervous uh, as speakers? Is, is there something special? Well, you know, there are a number of things that uh, it really depends on the on, on the person, and I think on their own image certainly has a lot to do with it. Uh, perhaps an unrealistic self-image. But in some profound ways, I think that people are just more anxious than they really need to be. People feel that they are you know, unprepared, that they perhaps don't know enough about the topic they're going to speak. Notice people want to throw so much information at an audience. They want to give so much detail and so much just to show they know what they're talking about and they're afraid that they're not getting it all across. And it's really... The reason for this is a lack of a clear objective. So people really over overwhelm an audience with too much detail, perhaps the wrong amount of details. That's one. And then not really knowing the audience well enough. And when I say that, I mean, of course, you can go into a speaking situation and not know the audience at all. In order to connect with the audience, you have to know them. You have to know their background. You have to know why they're there. You have to know uh, who makes up the audience and where the key decision makers are and, uh, and what do they hope to get out of it. So when you don't really know an audience, you're speaking sort of, it's like meeting someone, a stranger, and trying to have an intimate conversation when you don't really know who you're speaking to. Mm. So those are, I'd say those are two keys Very good. Uh, that, that make people nervous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and, and that makes it really clear <laughs> that there are ways of, of overcoming uh, those things. And, uh, Lorena, uh, you know, in, in looking at uh, what the top situations that might bring public speaking anxiety to the surface, what, what would you say they are? We go through ten of them in the book. Let me think of ones we hear the most often. Definitely speaking before a large audience. Something about the size of the audience certainly makes a difference for people. I'd say introducing yourself before a group. This is sort of like in a networking situation. That can certainly be anxiety-provoking. And also speaking up at meetings. This is the kind of situation where you don't know when it's your turn to speak and you have to get yourself to say something and you, you miss the opportunity. So I'd say that speaking in front of a large audience, introductions before a group, and speaking up at meetings are three of the top ones. Yeah, and and those are the kinds of things that uh, you can, again, uh, actually create sort of a strategy uh, for uh, overcoming those, right? Uh, Absolutely. Like if, if you're not sure of, of when you're going to speak, what would you say would be a good strategy for that? 
one of the problems that people do is they'll sit there and they'll mentally rehearse what they're going to say in their head, and this is really, really common. And This is actually shown to be what we call an overcompensating behavior that actually backfires and increases anxiety. So what you need to do is keep yourself present in the moment. You want to get out of your head and get into the situation, and naturally you'll be able to contribute. You don't want to sit there over planning what you're going to say because then it's going to sound artificial and it won't flow with the topic at hand. Hi, this is Dr. Proactive, Randy Gilbert. Thank you for listening to InsideSuccessRadio.com. Now I want to invite you to listen to this entire interview for free. All you have to do to get VIP access is to type in the link as you see it below. In addition to this powerful interview, you'll be able to hear many other of your favorite celebrities such as Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, Robert Allen, Zig Ziglar, and dozens of others. Plus, there are thousands of dollars in valuable bonus gifts just waiting for you to redeem them. Go ahead, type in the link that appears at the bottom, and join me in my studio.